When you loaded up Football Manager 2023, did you think you'd accidentally opened FM22 by mistake? Because I did. I felt underwhelmed. I felt a little bit sad. And when I realised the state of play, I reached out to a friend of mine, Blues Till I Die, Tom, and said, Tom, can we get a skin made for FM23? And we have worked faster than we've ever worked before on this to get it out for the beta. Welcome to WTCS. Five. This is an ongoing project to bring you an enhanced Football Manager experience, making the game look nice, functional, and just adding in stuff that the base game lacks. Like the fact that for whatever reason, attributes aren't shown on scout cards. Why, why are we not seeing the attributes of players that you scout on this screen? And also, on this overview screen, why is there not the potential ability and current ability of the players that you've scouted? You can't even right click to add it in. There are so many things that WTCS does to just make the game look better. We can have attributes on the scout reports if we want. On the overview, we can see the ability and potential of players. There is loads of little quality of life improvements you might have not even known that you needed. Now, in this video today, I'm going to give you an overview as to what is currently changed in version 1.0. Bear in mind, this is an ongoing project. We're going to take a look at some of the different ways that you can use the skin, some features that you might not even know exist, run through some essential preferences as well, things that you are absolutely going to want to sort for when you're using this skin. Do not skip that part of the video. Maybe tease a few things coming in the future. And finally, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to install this skin yourself and well, how to mod it if you want to change some stuff. Maybe you don't want to have my logo in the top right. Good news, you can remove it with a few file swaps. Now, before we get into things, I feel like we should probably talk about what a skin is, because I appreciate we have new people play Football Manager every year. For those of you that don't know, a skin essentially alters the user interface layout. The skin itself doesn't include logos. It doesn't include faces. They are all separate graphic downloads. I'm in the process of doing a whole host of videos on those things. So if you want to get custom faces for your players, you know, if you're going to be managing in the Premier League, you're probably going to want the logos of Premier League clubs, maybe even the kits of clubs, the stadium pitches as well. Those guides are on the channel. Check out the playlist down in the description if you've not already got that stuff installed. Now, as I already mentioned, this is version 1.0 of the skin. There are going to be minor issues. You may encounter them. If you do encounter them, I encourage you to report them so we can help fix it for future versions of this skin. We've not yet touched any of the in-match user interface, but that might be coming soon. And by might, I mean it is coming soon. Preview screenshots. Slap them on screen now. This is what you can expect. Work in progress. Could change, just... It is happening. So the first screen that has a major overhaul in this version is the club overview screen. Of course, you can see on screen here, we have past games, upcoming games, the league table. On top of that, we have a picture of the stadium. That is from a stadium picture pack that you will need to install separately. Beyond that as well, we have this panel here that you could choose to have different things in. You could have the league position history. You could have the trophies if you've got a trophy pack installed. As well as that, you're able to look at club competition history, the club's facilities, and also the transfers in and out from this screen. And this doesn't just include your team. You can look at what other teams have been up to in the transfer market, what their facilities look like. And on top of that, if I'm playing Gladbach in an upcoming game, from this screen here, you are able to look at their last known lineup. Look at the team that they played previously. Maybe get a sneak peek into what formation they're going to play against you without having to delve too deep into match reports. Now, the other screen that has radical changes compared to the base version of the game is the player profile. From here, you have a load of different customizable options in terms of panels that you can have. You can have the player's pros and cons from this page. You can look at their overall kind of recent form, squad comparisons, the form for the last 20 games. And the thing I really like about the form for the last 20 games is players who miss games will visibly show the fact that they missed a game. So this isn't just the last five games they played, which you can see, for example, in the recent form here. This is a really good visual indicator as you go into a season of just how regularly players have been playing, particularly when you're trying to manage playing time. It's kind of a nice way to visualize it. Of course, you can customize this to your heart's desire. If you don't want the polygon up at the top, you could put the polygon down here. Elsewhere, of course, you could maybe have something else here, past injuries. If you want to monitor a player's injury history, Maybe that's something you'd like to have on here. Now, I will say if you're having issues with player profiles and the panels and they just keep resetting, there is a fix for this. You need to go into your preferences. And if you just search panel, 
you want to make sure that automatically override custom panels is not ticked. If this is ticked, these will start resetting and it'll make you unhappy. You'll probably cry. Additionally, from this screen, you have a load of other options you can look at. Player analysis stuff can be looked at from here. So if you want to have a quick deep dive into statistics around your players, who's playing well? Is Karim Adiemi a bad crosser? No, he just doesn't cross very much because he's cutting in all the time on his left foot. You can do that all from here. On top of that, there's a few other tabs. If you want to discuss with a player their unhappiness, you can absolutely do that. You can look at their recent form for the last 20 games and have a look at exactly how they've been doing. You have their happiness, a nice little breakdown here of expected playing time. If you want to change their agreed playing time, you can do it from this tab here. The player history exists here. You can also set up player training. And the nice thing about this is it actually highlights what's been focused on. So if I'm going to focus on his, I don't know, quickness, you can see it is highlighted within this screen. And also when players are training well, you can also praise them from this screen which is rather nice because I've just added myself as a manager halfway through the season. The button that would exist, and I promise you it would be here, it's not here, but you can praise players directly from this screen. Over on the tactics screen, no radical changes in this version, but what you might notice is you have all these lovely player faces. And as I already mentioned, there are improvements over on the scouting side of things, just including stuff like ability and potential on the scouting overview screen. When it comes to scout reports, actually being able to see the attributes by going to the cards view. Loads of little changes like this that ultimately make the game way more usable in its first version. Unlike previous versions of this skin, it is adaptable, so if you're running on a laptop that isn't at 1920 by 1080 this skin should still work. There might be a few different issues with panels, but it does now work to a certain extent. Now, I already mentioned one preference in terms of making sure that you have unticked automatically override panels. A couple of other preferences you might want to touch. If you'd like to have the sidebar as icons only like I do on the left hand side, if you make sure this tick box for sidebar icons only is ticked, that will mean that you just have the icons. If you don't have it ticked, you can just have the regular default kind of drop down sidebar with all the titles for the icons if you so wish. And if you don't like my attribute colors, which are set up in this skin and you want to change them, which, you know, is fair enough, you can come up to the preferences and go to custom skin colors. And from here, you are able to change the attribute. So if you don't like yellow for all the high numbers, which is kind of understandable, you can change that here. But if you want your game to look exactly as mine does, that will be how it looks by default, which is I suppose a nice little win. No longer do you have to ask me for my attribute colors. They're in the WTCS5 skin this year. And I know this comes up semi-frequently. If you want to have your youth team show up in the sidebar, you are going to have to change a staff responsibility and be taking control of youth training in some capacity. By taking control of individual training for both the under 19s in this case and the second team and confirming it, you can see we now have options to navigate to the under 19 squad. Now to install the skin, you're going to want to download it from one of a couple of places it is hosted online. For this example, I'm doing it over at FM Scout. If you go to this page link down in the description, you're going to click on the download now option. This is going to take us over to this screen here. From here, if the download isn't starting, you're just going to click this option to start it manually. This is going to take you to Mediafire, which is where the skin is hosted. As you can see, I have now got a downloaded version of the skin. You're going to want to copy this file from your downloads and put it in your Football Manager's skins folder. On Windows, this is at C users, then your Windows username, in my case, Jack, documents, sports interactive, football manager 2023, and then skins. If you do not have a skins folder in this location, you're going to want to make one. It needs to be lowercase. If you're on Mac, I'll have where it is located, the skins folder down in the description. From here, you're going to paste in your file. And once you've got WinRAR installed, which if you haven't, check out the guide for WinRAR down in the description. You're simply going to hit right click on this file, hit extract here. And this is now going to extract our skin to a folder called WTCS5. Inside this skin, you can see we have all the different files that make up the skin itself. Now, one important thing to note, if you were to right click on this file and click extract to WTCS5, this is going to create a folder within a folder. The game does not like this. So you can see here how I ha have to click through the same file twice. It's really, really important with this skin that you don't do this. Otherwise, the skin won't show up in game. But of course, assuming you've clicked extract here, there won't be a folder within a folder. You'll just enter this folder and the skin exists immediately. If your game looks like this, 
the skin will work. So once you've extracted that skin's file to the folder that I've just shown over on your Windows PC, you're going to want to go to Preferences, and from here where it says Skin, in this drop-down you'll have Football Manager by default, and if you've done it all correctly, you will have WTCS5. If you select this skin, confirm it, it will show up in your game. Now, as I've already mentioned, the graphics that you see here, such as the stadium pictures, the logo packs, the face packs, the trophy packs, they are all separate downloads. They are linked down in the description with guides to each one of them. I I haven't done the stadium video at the time of recording. It will be coming very, very soon though. Now, the last thing that I want to cover with this skin is modifying files. At the moment, there are only two mods that exist within this skin. The first is to remove the instant result button. The second is to re remove the work the space branding. If you want to do the first one, for example, you're going to enter this folder. Within here, you have a menus folder and a panels folder. You are going to want to copy these from the mods folder, go into the skins folder itself, hit paste, hit replace files and this will then remove my logo from your game if that's what you want. Down the line there is going to be more mod options. They are done the exact same way that I've just shown that. Anyway, that wraps up this look at WTCS in its 1.0 version. Down the line, I might do some updated videos showing you the latest version of the skin as further changes come in. As I've already said, this is an ongoing process, given the fact the game's been out for less than a week. As you can imagine, it's very much a project in its infancy. Nevertheless, I hope this video was helpful to show you how to use the skin, install the skin, and just give you a little overview of what to expect if you want to install it yourself. If you're new around here and you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for more football manager content besides that check out the other graphics guides linked down in the description hopefully i'll see you guys very very soon for more football manager videos and until next time take it easy it is me jack and i'll talk to you in a bit i'm out